Hello, I am Carol Ha, Associate Curator of Contemporary Art at the Freer and Sackler Galleries, the Smithsonian's National Museum of Asian Art. While the museum is closed, I think fondly of the sculpture Monkey's Grasp for the Moon. Installed in the main staircase of the Sackler, it is the most visible and one of the most beloved objects in the museum. Stretching 26 meters from the skylight down to the fountain three floors below, the monkeys, as they are affectionately called, would greet me each day like ever-present friends. They first arrived at the museum in 2001 during the special exhibition Wordplay, Contemporary Art by Xu Bing, one of the earliest and most important monographic presentations of contemporary Chinese art in the United States. During this period of his practice, Xu Bing had gained international recognition for his conceptual work and his innovative way of interpreting traditional Chinese forms and contemporary art, as well as the symbols we use to communicate. The Sackler exhibition premiered a series of ink and brush landscape paintings called Landscripts, composed of written characters that expanded on what he called the living word or the connections between the natural world and the formation of written language. Specially commissioned for the Sackler, the installation Monkey's Grasp for the Moon further explores the concept as a three-dimensional experience. Collecting from the museum staff the word monkey written in 21 languages, Shu transformed them into a visual representation of a familiar folk tale about monkeys who link arm to tail, reaching for the moon, only to discover that what they saw was merely a vanishing reflection on the water. The installation offers a playful visual experience that is also characteristic of Shu's way of using language to disrupt expectations and ways of thinking. It is also a wonderful example of artistic vision meeting the expertise and collaborative spirit of the Smithsonian Institution. I'd like to thank Jonathan Zastro of the Office of Exhibit Central for the production images that I will show you. In 2004, the sculpture was replicated to make it more structurally stable. The challenge was to make a stronger yet lighter version while adhering to the artist's aesthetic requirements of perfectly fitting interlocking pieces with no visible cables or wires. The process began with laser precision cutting of multiple layers of each monkey, dipping each side of each layer in glue, assembling the layers, then vacuum clamping each monkey for several hours. Once cured, the monkeys were lacquered, a process that includes finishing with an automotive lacquer, custom formulated to be flexible and avoid cracking as the wood segments were stretched by the weight of the sculpture. Finishing and sanding took place in many, many layers in the most labor and time intensive part of the fabrication. Next, each monkey was weight tested individually according to its position in the chain. Here you see each of the 21 languages and the test results. The installation was a careful maneuver as members of the installation team perched above the skylight, the Sackler's tallest point, and removed a glass panel. As you might imagine, we all held our breaths as the first monkey was suspended, and then each one was hooked on until we reached the small pool far below. Thousands of visitors during the last two decades have seen the beloved sculpture, played the game of identifying each of the monkeys, wound around it as they descended the light-filled stairs into the galleries. It has become a beloved landmark that also invites one to think about the malleability of language, as well as the possibilities and maybe even the pitfalls of communicating across cultures. Thank you for listening. I look forward to seeing you in the museum soon.